everybody. Okay, so I am Dr. Leslie Blevins and today we're doing some lunchtime learning. Uh, really quick uh, disclosure, I'm not your psychologist and I'm not your child psychologist. So if you're seeking treatment, please talk to your primary care provider, your physician, your child's physician, and uh, make sure you get an appropriate referral. So let's jump into it. Today we are talking about praising. I bet you've been told to praise your child and really grow their self-esteem. Well, today we're specifically going to talk about praising to, yeah, let's grow their self-esteem. Let's um, grow some of those values and characteristics that you really hope that they have as they are becoming teenagers and young adults and, you know, middle-aged adults and living their lives. And also, let's correct some behavior problems too along the journey. And so, this is actually a pretty big topic. I think that a lot of times parents are told to praise, and I was um, definitely guilty of this at the beginning of my training, where you say, okay, well praise, and that's gonna fix all your problems, and a parent hears that, and they try it, and it doesn't work. And so I really want to empathize with all of you guys out there and say that it's way bigger than that. So this video lesson is actually going to be broken apart into several video lessons because praise is, is pretty nuanced and it's got a lot going on. So the thing we're going to chat about today is praising the opposite. So let's pretend, let's say that we have a kid who flicks their peas or whatever food they have on their plate and you would just really really love it if they had great um, you know table manners and you want to be able to take them to a restaurant and that would be so awesome so what I want you to think about one is what your value is for your child for having that skill okay and this is an important step, so I don't want you to really bypass this step. But I really want you to kind of think through what's the big goal for this little tiny human that you know you, you want to keep alive, that you want to see excel across their life. Why is it important for them to not flick peas when they're sitting at the dinner table? Okay, so maybe something that's coming up for you is that you want them to not get thrown out of restaurants. You want them to be able to date. You want them to be able to sit through the portions of job interviews whenever they might have to go out to lunch. There's lots of reasons why we might want to avoid flicking our peas at the dinner table, right? And so basically you, you want them to be respected. You want them to show their respect for other people. You want them to create loving and caring relationships with others yeah you don't want them to be judged poorly right so there's lots of values that go into this one behavior that's so important to really get to because whenever we praise the opposite i want you to not just praise how um keeps his peas on his plate and maybe shifts them onto the fork or the spoon and puts them in his mouth so nicely. I also really want you to add that value label on that praise too, okay? And so this is nice because over time as little Johnny's learning how to do this skill, he's actually starting to internalize um, that value that you value in your family and as he's growing up, He's starting to say to himself, you know what? I really value treating others with respect. And one of the ways that I show respect is by using good table manners, okay? So that's the values piece. Now let's talk about um, praising the opposite. So little Johnny is taking his fork and he is flicking peas over at the dog. He thinks it's so cool that the dog is eating his peas which it is, it's really cool, it's really funny and you're trying not to laugh. And so let's be honest, whenever you laugh, that is a form of praise 
that gets little Johnny to do it again. And you did it one time when he was three and now he's done it every single day and now he's five and he thinks it's the coolest thing. And so you've actually kind of, yeah, you've created the situation and it's okay. Be kind to yourself, it's okay. So we're going to start shifting the situation. We're gonna start putting a lot of praise on the opposite forms of flicking peas and we're gonna really not pay attention to other times when he does flick peas, okay? So let's say that he has a pea, he flicks it. I want you to act like it's the dullest, most boring thing ever. And then in that one moment where he's not flicking peas, I want you to acknowledge him and be really enthusiastic. Thank you so much for keeping your food on your plate, Johnny. I really appreciate that, really great job. Now at first, yeah, it's pretty likely that his behavior is gonna go up and that's because Johnny's been trained over time that when your attention's on him, he can flick peas and make you laugh, okay? So at first, it'll go up just a little bit, okay? It might even go up just a lot and that's okay, but if you're consistent, okay? And consistent means like over the next two, three weeks, every single meal with all the foods that Johnny flicks, if you're consistent, then what will happen is he will actually start doing the thing that gets him the attention from you. He'll start paying attention to that. And so what he'll do is stop flicking the peas and leaving the peas on his plate. So then let's say that you're actually giving him lots of good eye contact and back rubs, because that's praise too, right? That's physical praise. Maybe you give a back rub or a high five or a fist bump, or you're saying, great job, like you're doing awesome. Anything like that, then whenever you do those things, he's going to start doing more of it. So let's say that you, you're now praising him, putting the food directly from the plate to his mouth. He's gonna start doing that more. So, to summarize, okay, what I want you to really think about is labeling the value that you're trying to instill in your child, okay? Because we're not trying to just willy-nilly just have our kids just do anything. We really are trying to have a goal for them in life. We're trying to create these human beings that have meaningful, beautiful lives over time. And so I want you to kind of think deeply about what, it, what your goal is. If you're kind of lost in the process and you're sitting at the dinner table and you're feeling overwhelmed and you don't really know where things are going, it's hard to, to do an intervention with fidelity, okay? It's hard to consistently do this for three weeks whenever they're kind of escalating on flicking peas because they know they have your attention. They know you laughed in the past at it. And so for you to really stick to your guns and to consistently stay neutral, don't give them any reinforcement for that flea pick, pee flicking, and then give them tons of enthusiastic, warm, reinforcing um, praise for appropriately feeding themselves the peas. To do that, you really gotta know why you're doing it, okay? All right, so this was our lunchtime learning video. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and like my Anilda Clinic Facebook page. You can also head over to anildaclinic.com. I do have an email listserv set up there. You can sign up and you can get these videos directly into your email. Okay, all right, thanks, bye.